guys and welcome back to my channel. You can see there is a new background and that's because I finally moved and I'm settling into my new apartment at the moment. Everything is still a war zone and not ready to be on camera to be honest but I'm really really excited to start this new chapter here in my new apartment and as you can see the sewing room is coming together there are loads of blank walls still so that's something I really want to change but those are small projects and I have so many projects like that throughout the whole apartment and I still want to design and decorate everything so that it looks really really nice, homey and livable. As you guys know my collection launched this Friday actually a few days ago and I am so so happy to share that with you. If you haven't checked it out yet because maybe you're not following me on Instagram which you should, that you might have not heard it, but I launched my 12 piece collection. This is a highly limited collection with three pieces each. So go ahead and click the link below and uh, check out my Etsy store. Everything is handmade by myself, made to order. Production will start in June so that I can, you know, get settled in here a bit and then fully get into the whole sewing and stuff. So please go ahead and check out my Etsy store. That's the best way to support me. And I would just love for you to just look at it. There's also obviously still my patterns and everything there, but now there is also my collection and I also have some jewelry. So you might wanna check that out too. Of course, today I have a project for you guys, which I'm so excited to share because this is actually a project that is perfect for summer, that is easy, that everybody can do and the dress is just amazing, so cute. We're going to make a milkmaid's dress today. This is a topic a lot of people requested actually and of course I couldn't say no to that, which is why I did that for this week and I actually managed to make everything from zero to finished in under four hours, which says a lot because obviously you guys do not have to do the pattern as I of course digitized my pattern and I will link it down in the description below for you to look at and you don't even have to do any of that. So for you, it's just a matter of sewing everything together, which is gonna take even less. So that's a really, really cool thing. And the result of the dress is just such a cute one. I mean, you can see it hanging there, but I'm so excited to share this with you guys. Also, another thing, my microphone didn't work, which is why I got a new one. This is actually a professional one. So I hope the quality is a bit better as the old one had like these weird sounds in the middle sometimes. So I hope this one doesn't do it. And I, yeah, I don't say anything throughout the video, which is why I am dubbing the whole video and like talking over it now, which is hopefully fine. And I'm trying my best to be as detailed as I possibly can. And with that all out of the way, let's just jump right into the video. And here we go. Hello and welcome from my old apartment store. This is the fabric that I will be using. It's such a beautiful fabric with these flowers all over. It's actually a very like wide fabric, like extra wide kind of like curtain fabric, which is something I did not know. <laughs> I just got it and I figured that this is a big boy. <laughs> Anyways, I'm starting off with draping. So I'm using some muslin that I always use for draping purposes and cut something off a piece around like 50 centimeters or so in height so that it covers the whole body of my dress form. And I just put it around the dress form so that the widest parts of the body are covered nicely and everything in between is just hanging loosely because the next step will be to put all the darts in which is basically forming the dress and smoothing everything out to fit the body. I specifically wanted the dart in the front to be diagonal towards the center front. Everything else is just straight line, a vertical straight line down. This is going to be my side seam. All of the darts that I just put in are actually going to be dividing seams. So I'm not gonna have any darts in this whole bodice as all of the lines are going to go from the very top to the hem of the bodice. This is the back dividing seam. And then obviously you have the center back with the zipper and then the center front, which will be laying on a fold as I didn't want a seam in the center front. And and once that is done, I smooth out everything so that everything lays nicely and I draw in the cups. So this is very important because the milkmaid's dress have this ruffled 
cups and that's I think such a beautiful detail which makes it so unique and the best way I found to make this is actually to cut out a like almond shaped piece I guess. This was completely not measured and just you know eyeing how big I want this to be. It's just a I guess 40 centimeter wide and 15 centimeter high almond kind of shaped piece of fabric which I folded in the beginning just to see if it works but I ended up actually using my ruffling foot which looks like this and uh, this made the perfect shape to be honest. I had minor corrections that I needed to do towards the side seam there because the shape wasn't correct so it's actually more like an eye shape, a very long eye shape but everything like that obviously will be already done in the pattern but just for you if you'd like to recreate this yourself this is what the shape looks like. So the next thing that I am doing is actually drawing in all of the lines that I need to make this an actual pattern. Uh, the more lines, the better in my opinion. Very, very helpful. But the most important lines are for sure center back, center front, dividing seams, and then obviously the side seam. I draw in where the bodice is gonna end on top and take everything apart to make this an actual pattern. So I take out all the ruffles, take out all the stitches there so that it lays flat. I cut off the pieces that I draped and once I take the pins out, this is actually really funny because it's just gonna open up the whole darts and lay flat and you can actually see what the draped pieces look like on a flat surface, which in my opinion is kind of funny. But you need to do this in order to draw the lines nicely and to make you know straight lines and like to, to correct it, to measure all of the seams that you have, that all of the lines, all of the notches, everything is at the same length, same height, same measurement. And for me, obviously, on top of that, as I wanted to digitize the pattern, I needed to have a very correct pattern and very specific patterns so that I can provide you with a pattern that completely works and that is correct and everything. So this is what I'm doing right there. I'm also drawing out the cups in a nice shape so that they also go smoothly from one piece to the other and then into the center front, which is just a really nice uh, edge right there. And apart from that, I'll just put some names in it so that I know what's up and what's down. I finish the cup itself. You can see the shape right there. It's like a really wide like eye kind of shape. And that's it, basically. And you can start cutting all of your patterns out. For the fabric, I am using this beautiful cotton canvas with these flowers printed on. I fell in love with that. I did not realize when I bought it that it was a heavy, let's say, curtain fabric, but it ended up being kind of perfect because it's draping very nicely when it is on the bias, which my skirt is. I'm really, really happy with my choice. This is like, how is it called in English? It's like country house style, if I would translate it word by word from German. And I really, really enjoy this dress very much. The first thing that I do is actually overlocking everything in this case. Normally I like to, you know, do everything when it's time to do it. So I sew and then I overlock, I sew, I overlock. But this time actually I overlocked everything up front because I knew that I'm not going to have to overlock stuff together or whatever because this is just not how I'm going to make the dress. This is going to be a very, very easily manufactured dress. So everything is going to have overlocked edges on the inside because of a few reasons. One of them, for example, is that it is fast and you guys are able to do it at home. The first thing that I'm actually doing is taking my cups and ruffling up the lower edge of them. So that's going to make the nice ruffled effect on my cups in the end on the dress and I turn over the front because I'm gonna have like a little bit of a slit in the front, in the center front. So there's gonna be this one edge on both cups that you just need to turn over, top stitch, and you're done with that. And I do the same thing to the top actually. So the top corner of the cups is also just, the seam allowance is turned over and then top stitched. So very, very nicely with the difference that the top actually gets a cord inside of this. So this is actually a tunnel. Make sure actually that you stitch 
away from the edge there to create a wide enough tunnel for whatever material you're using to make the upper ruffles. In my case I'm using a, quite a big cord actually because I wanted to have this kind of rough style there as it was in my opinion fitting very well to the overall print on the dress. I just take a safety pin to make it go through the tunnel. This is a very very handy uh, tip that I got taught in kindergarten or something, I don't know. So very very easy and very nice. I knot it on the one side that's going to be tied up in the center front and then the other side I'm actually going to pull through all the way up until the edge and put a pin in there so that it doesn't fall out. This is going to be fixed into the cup seam in just a second once the cups are getting sewn into the bodice. Next up is sewing the bodice together. So you have seven pieces in total, front, side front, side back, and back. And the front is laying on fold, as you can see right there. So you basically just need to stitch everything together, side front to front, right sides together, top stitch, and what I like to do in this specific case, as it is not lined, I like to fix the seam allowances into place. So also after washing, after wear, whatever, that they stay where they are supposed to. And in this case, it's actually nicer for them to be towards the center back. Everything in general, so all of the seams are getting top stitched towards the center back. I fold them and top stitch them very closely to the seam just to hold them in place. And I do that throughout the whole bodice, just to be sure, basically. Next thing that I do is take the side back and put right sides together with the side front. So this is, I guess, the side seam. I do the same thing. I stitch the pieces together and then top stitch with the seam allowance facing towards the center back. And the last pieces are the back pieces. So this is what it's gonna look like. And I actually didn't iron this at all up to this point. So it pretty much ironed itself with the top stitching the seam allowances to where they should lay. I take my cups and I start from the center front. So the center front, it has an edge in the center front, but with the seam allowance, there is going to be some sort of corner which you have to fold down. So you have to finish your upper edge before you pin your cups into place. The same thing goes for the seam allowance of the remaining upper edge. As you can see right here, you have to fold it down like you did with the tunnel, basically, and then sew everything in place. Otherwise, there's going to be a problem because you're gonna have, you know, open, raw, overlocked edges while the cups are folded down and it's just not going to look nice. So make sure to fold the center front seam allowance down and then also before you sew the cups in the other part of the upper edge that you also fold the seam allowance down here and then you can sew everything in and I also top stitch the cups with the seam allowance facing into the cup. Next up, we're going to continue with the skirt actually already. So the bodice is complete. There's just the sleeves that we have to do. I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. But we're going to make half a sock roll skirt for the whole dress. So what you want to do is actually calculate one circle in this case, which is your waist. And what you want to calculate is the radius because you know that your waist circumference and you don't know the radius that you need to draw a circle around to get the circumference of your waist of the skirt. So what you want is to use the formula 
2 times pi times the radius equals your circumference. And if you turn it around, it's the formula your waist circumference divided by 2 times pi. But that's for a full circle skirt. As we are doing half of the circle skirt, you just kick out the 2 because you do 2 times your circumference divided by 2 times pi. So the formula is just your circumference divided by pi and that's making your half circle skirt. Now one thing that I wanted to point out, if you use the calculator that I linked below, it's going to tell you all of the measurements with seam allowance already included. So if you like to do that, go ahead and use the calculator for that or just make sure to also subtract two centimeters off of the formula. So I'm going to put in the screen right here two formulas, one for without the seam allowance and one for with the seam allowance for half a circle skirt. So that we avoid confusion. <laughs> so whatever formula you end up choosing is actually creating the waist circle. Then obviously you're gonna have to make another circle with your skirt length included. So the radius that you just calculated for your waist circle plus the radius that you choose for your skirt length. So in my case I chose 70 centimeters for my complete circle length plus the, in my case, 20 centimeters for my waist. In that case, I made another circle with the radius of 90 centimeters. One at 20, one at 90. And then you can cut out the whole piece. I put it back on my form just to check that everything worked out. It did. And then I also went ahead and drew some notches where the seams are from my bodice, cut into my seam allowance there and made a slit because I wanted to have a slit on the left leg so I actually chose the front dividing seam as a guide and I drew a line from the bottom to the top of my skirt and cut it in half. And one thing that I wanted to point out for that which is very important before you cut out your circle skirt is that you have to make room for the seam allowance in here. So if you do your circle skirt yourself and you use the formulas and everything, just make sure that you put two times your seam allowance into your waist circumference in order to make room for the slit that you just cut apart, you know? So in my case, I had a waist circumference of 64 that I measured. So I didn't use 64, I used 66 in the formula just for the slit seam allowance that I need to put into the waist circumference. I went ahead and actually sewed the skirt together. So I sewed the center back together up until like 15 centimeters lower than the waist line because it's gonna be a zipper in there. And I sewed the slit together up until the notch that is in the pattern or up until whenever you want the slit to open. Ironed the seams open so that the slit is also nicely, I also top, top stitched it there. And then I went ahead and sewed the bodice to the skirt. I also went ahead and top stitched the seam allowance into the skirt just for it to lay nicely. One thing that I wanted to talk about are the sleeves because I didn't mention them at all. They are a rectangle, like literally just a rectangle with an elastic in them. And you can go ahead and just cut a 50 centimeters times 25 centimeters rectangle for each sleeve. I, that's not the exact measurements. It's like 47 or something. I don't remember what it is, but it's very, very, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's just a rectangle and then I used a, an elastic on top and bottom to cinch it in and I just bar tacked it onto the side seams like you can see right there. And the other thing is I put the elastic for the lower part of the sleeve like three centimeters higher than the hem of the sleeve just to, for it to have like this cute ruffle effect. And the last thing that I did is actually make a nice folded hem. As you can see right here, this is the corner of the slit and the hem. I folded the hem seam allowance like in a diagonal way so it wouldn't show in the front. And it actually made a really, really nice edge right there. And I just top stitched it all the way to the other side of the slit, all the way around over the center back and towards the slit again at around 1.5 centimeters, one to 1.5 centimeters, doesn't really matter. I also did the same diagonal fold right there so it doesn't show in the front and it also makes this really really nice corner and that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it i'm going to show you a few clips of me wearing the dress actually we filmed it here before the whole backdrop was done done <laughs> before the table was built and stuff so it was just the uh, wardrobes there which is really really cool it was such a unique um chance basically 
to film everything right here because you will never see that again <laughs> and it looked very very elegant if you ask me but before we get into that part i just quickly wanted to ask you to just hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified whenever i post next i post every sunday like this video if you liked it and leave a comment down below maybe you have a video idea that you would like me to make and I would be very happy to actually realize that project that you have in mind. Follow me on Instagram to see more behind the scenes, especially nowadays with moving and decorating and stuff. I will share a lot that I am doing here in my new apartment. And of course, every thing behind the scenes in the sense of sewing and also my collection. So click in the link below or just go to Instagram and put this is Kachi in there. My username is the same on every social that I have. I would be very happy for you to follow me there. And yeah, that's all. And I'm gonna see you next Sunday. Bye guys!